fenders. Look at all the movement there. The rubbing with them and causing me flat tires. But the other problem I had was uh, the gates up in the back. Those ramps have a lower uh, support, if you will. And then the, the other trailer that I looked at had these big giant gates that a lot like came to pick up the two or three tractors from Kentucky. So hey guys, Capper here. Welcome back. So this video I initially posted last year, but at the time I didn't realize that I actually needed a CDL. And so I... Uh, I took that video down and I remade the entire video and I'm going to explain to you how it all happened, kind of a little bit of how I now have my CDL. It's a class A without air brakes, but the video is still good for information on when you're looking at buying a trailer. And then of course I'll get into a little bit about when you're going to need that CDL and when you won't need it for your combination. So let's get into it. Don't forget if you enjoy the video, hit the like button and consider subscribing and I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. Hey guys, Capper here, welcome back. Today I just got my brand new Imperial trailer. It's a 22 footer. However, I'm gonna show you why it'll load like a 26 footer. And I'm gonna go over all the uh, reasons that I picked this. And I'm gonna compare it to similar trailers with different options on them. I'm gonna show you how I paid for it, how much it cost and all that. These trailers are made in here in Illinois, Southern Illinois. Let's go over some of the features that I like on it. First of all, it's a tilt deck. Um, I've never had a tilt deck before. I don't want to tilt it right now because I don't know how hard it'll be to push back down, but it's supposed to have a cylinder in there and the whole deck tilts. It's a 22 footer right down to the end of the flat deck. And these little ramp tabs are almost two feet. So, but these skid rails, I love these skid rails. If you've watched the channel, that's one of the problems I've had was, was, uh, nudging these with my tractor tires and it, they rub in here and then it caused some blowouts so this is three inch well, actually i think it's a five inch skid rail so there's 82 inches and my tractor is 81 inches so there's really hardly any room so this should it should act as a bumper and guide them back wheels right in here here's another thing i like here i can finally stand on these these fenders uh, on the other one, it wasn't meant for any kind of load and getting in and out of the machines, especially with my hips, I had to like squeeze in this little bitty space right here to try to get on a machine. So this is a nice plus. I really like that. It's got stake pockets all the way around and I got a bunch of new D-rings. This trailer is rated at 18,000 pounds, which was perfect for what I wanted. It's a... Uh, 4,000 heavier than I could load on my last trailer, but it's still not in CDL range. But it's still not in CDL range. But it's still not in CDL range. Um, there's obviously the uh, lever to tilt the bed. And these tires, uh, they're like semi tires. I think they're, uh, I think, yeah, 16 ply. So I should have no more problems worrying about blowouts than that. Although I did load up new sockets because these lugs are much bigger. So I loaded up new bigger sockets in my truck for my impact wrench, you know, just in case. Up here, it's got a nice weatherproof toolbox. Very handy. So right now in my truck, uh, I have all of my loading supplies in here piled up. So that's actually gonna save me some room back here in my truck. It's utilizing the full two and a half inch frame here for the Ford. This is the like the super heavy duty tow package. So the new hitch and ball is 20,000 pound. Okay so as far as the CDL this is where I went wrong last time. Um, this trailer has 18,000 pound GVWR and I thought that my truck was less than it was. So the gross vehicle weight rating of my truck is 10,000 pounds, which basically means the entire gross weight that thing is rated to carry. 
So you add the 10,000 with the 18,000 on the trailer and I'm at 28,000 pounds gross vehicle weight rating for the combined vehicles together, the truck and the trailer. So to require a CDL if you are over 26,000 pounds, meaning 26,001 pounds for the combination, you need a class A CDL. So after finding this out, I, I paid one of these sites to help, you know, for studies. So I did online study guides and testing and that, and I went and got my class A CDL. I had to take a driving test. And a safety test, basically a couple of backing maneuvers and so forth. Um, but I got my CDL. I did not need to have the air brake section because I have standard brakes here on my truck. So keep that in mind when you're looking for a trailer. Um, if you're over 26,000 pounds rating, not actual weight, but the rating between your truck and your trailer, you'll also need a CDL like me. It wasn't really that hard to get, but it did take a bunch of time and a bunch of study time, of course. So anyways, some of the other things that I was considering, um, I also looked at another 22 footer with ramps. Um, but before that, up here in the front, oftentimes I've, uh, needed just a little bit more space like if i've had my tractor bucket all the way to the front well on the old trailer up there they have a like a guardrail and then they have the uh, spare tire up there and then the jack is also on that rail and it has a grease circ on it so you really can't like load over the front at all whereas on this trailer you got this nice uh, heavy duty steel skid plate and you got another two feet that you could load or at least hang over up on the front here. So that literally makes this about a 26 foot loadable trailer, which will get me another four feet uh, compared to the last trailer. So that's a real nice plus here. It's about the same footprint, but yet I can load another, you know, two to four feet extra. Okay, so the brakes are standard, you know, they're electric brakes. Um, this one has brakes on all four tires. On my last PJ, I had to pay extra for that, which I did. Um, so some of the problems I had with my last trailer, as I mentioned here, were the fenders. All right, in case you're wondering why I seem to have a few more blowouts than everyone else, it's not weight. I'm good on the weight here. I'm under, this is a 14,000 trailer. This gross load is around 13,7-ish, 13,8 maybe, but here's the problem. I just got it all cleaned up while I'm waiting for my new tire. So you see this inside of the tire's worn a little. These fenders, I tighten them up now. But what happens is, so you get rocks, you get gravel and dirt in here. Okay, you see how that thing is loose? And I got no way of tightening it until I get back to my shop because there's only one little pocket slot there. I pounded that in. So these fenders, Look at all the movement there. Both of them are like that. But I just got all the dirt and rocks cleaned out so they I shouldn't be rubbing at all anymore. Um, obviously rubbing with them and causing me flat tires. But the other problem I had was uh, the gates up in the back. So there's only one time that I can remember where I was able to strap those gates up. But those ramps have a lower uh, support, if you will, that hits the ground. So you, you can only sneak a little bit extra with those kind of gates and then the other trailer that I looked at had these big giant gates that fold all the way over uh, like this this was a lot like them guys trailer that came to pick up the two or three tractors from Kentucky so that type of trailer you actually lose loading space because uh, if you're whatever you're loading is longer than those fold up ramps then you have to strap them up. So I definitely didn't like that design either. All right, so what prompted me to upgrade was that the new excavator is 1,100 pounds heavier than the old one. The old one was 9,300, the new one is 10,4. And that just put me over that 14K trailer. So that's the main reason um, that I wanted to upgrade, obviously for safety, but also for liability. If I were uh, ever over on it, I just didn't want to take the risk anymore. But the good news is, that, I mean, the way we were able to pay for this trailer is this year we leased out the Kentucky land and our Kentucky house for hunting.
So between that, between the 4,000 trade-in, and between what I've already made for our side business on the new R-Series excavator, between those th three things, it paid for this whole thing. Um, and it's another investment in the future. I can now haul an extra implement plus whatever machine I've got and extra stuff and not have to worry about it anymore. And an interesting note is, talk about inflation. Um, when I bought this in 2013, my old trailer, I paid $3,800 for it. For a 22-footer PJ, which was top of the line with four brakes on it, $3,800 for it. We got four grand for the trade-in on this one, so I got more than my money's worth out of it over the last eight years. And I also priced out some other 22-footers that are similar to the one I traded in with the ramps in the back and the little bumper in the front. And they're going for about 10 grand, you know, nine grand, 10 grand new. So, I mean, yeah, I could have saved some money on this, but one of the biggest things I hated doing was loading and unloading, and this should make it substantially easier to do that. It's time to put this one to work. I've been feeling better lately. I'm hoping to get back on the excavator. We got a couple of jobs lined up already with Curtis and a couple other property owners, so I'm going to be restocking the savings here pretty quick. So I hope to see you uh, soon. Soon I'll be back in the field. I might start right here. i got to clear some trees in my home backyard. And that way I'll be close to home right here by the house, you know, in case something happens with the blood clots and whatnot. But that's probably where I'm going to start in the next couple days. So I'll see you on the next one. Thanks a lot. So since this video, I've obviously been using this trailer for a lot of uh, land management projects. I haul my Bobcat Mini Excavator with it, and I also have a brush cutter. I haul my tractor and bush hog with it, and I also haul the skid steer and bush hog with it, as well as some other implements. So it's worked out good. I finally made the plunge instead of like pushing that 14,000 pound trailer. Now that I got an 18,000 pounder and a CDL, I don't really have to worry a whole lot about getting popped on the highway or worse yet, some liability thing if I blow a tire. So best of luck with your trailer picking adventures and your machine adventures. Life is short. Go out there and live it up the best you can. I hope to see you on a future video. Thanks a lot, guys.